Welcome everyone, in today's video we're looking at the Barrows Brothers, one of only four bosses in RuneScape without a pet. This video is made for both main accounts and Iron Man. If you're already familiar with Barrows and just looking for a reminder on what NPCs to kill in the crypt, jump over to the Crypt Critters section. As usual, you can find timestamps in the description or the progress bar. And guys, I'm super excited. I'm getting very close to 1,000 subscribers, so if you like the vid, please hit that subscribe button and join me on this journey. In other news, if you're interested, I've decided I'll be streaming every weekend. You can check the description for a link and the times. I mean, if you like my vids and think it'd be fun, then come check me out and say hi. You'll find me doing anything from the combat achievements, rating, working on my new group Iron Man account, which is also going to be led. That's a fully active team. Super excited for that. Now it's time to get down to business and talk about the requirements. To access Barrow Brothers, you will first need to complete the quest Priest in Peril, and Iron Man will need to complete the quest Nature Spirit. For the absolute bare minimum stats due to this, you'll need 50 magic, 43 prayer, 40 attack, strength, and defense. But this applies more to main accounts as you'll be relying much more on prayer pots, food, and super combat potions. So while this is viable, my recommendation in this video is going to be more towards players starting out with base 60s in their melees and 50 range. This will help you use significantly less supplies and make the overall grind more enjoyable and profitable. 70 prayer will also give you access to piety, which is useful. So getting to Barrows can be quite tedious. For Iron Man, I'd recommend getting 78 magic and 50 construction. Then you can stew boost to put the Barrows teleport in your POH. Main accounts alternatively can buy tablets on the Grand Exchange or use someone else's POH. By completing the Mortarnia Hard Diary, you'll get 50% more runes when you loot the chest at the end of the fight. It is highly recommended you do this before farming the boss consistently for both Iron Man and main accounts. For Iron Men, you'll get more Chaos and Death Runes, which will be used to purchase Onyxes, and the legs also provide a useful teleport. For main accounts, this will mean more GP per hour. Now, with decent gear and stats, this boss is an estimated 1 mil an hour in profit. They're about, depending on your RNG and luck, of course. But if you're just starting out or with the lowest end gear stats, of course, you're going to be earning a bit less than this. When it comes to getting to Barrows, you have a few options, but I'm only going to list the most viable ones. The first option, and definitely the quickest, will be teleporting via the Arceus spellbook. This requires 83 magic. Alternatively, you can use tablets or put a teleport in your portal room. If you can't access these teleports, your next best bet will be using Moritania Three Legs, which will teleport players to Berg de Rot, and then you can run from there. This is a bit far, and you'll likely want to bring a stamina potion with you if possible. Now, once every 30 minutes, you can use the Shades of Morton minigame found in your grouping tab. This is slightly closer than the Berg de Rot teleport, but it's still kind of far. Now on to gear progression. So given how weak the Barrows Brothers are to magic, the goal is to maintain a positive magic attack accuracy. This is easily attained without using magic gear, so it's unnecessary to bring it. You really only want to bring magic gear that adds an attack at percent bonus, and I'll mention the affordable ones as we go. Now as to gear that you'll likely be starting out with, there are a few key differences between Iron Man and main account. So on the left is the minimum gear setup for an Iron Man, and on the right is a minimum gear setup for a main account. As you can see, the gear is mostly the same. We'll both use an Ibn Staff, Magic Short Boat Imbued, a Dragon Simtar, a Dragon Dagger, a Dragon Defender, a Fighter Torso with Rune Plate Legs, Black Dehide, an Avis Device, Helm of Naze Knot, your best Ardoin Cloak, and notable differences here will be that Irons will probably have an Amulet of Power and Climbing Boots. However, main accounts will be able to buy an Amulet of Glory and Rune Boots while still being very cheap. For starting out, I also kept both accounts to using a Ring of Dueling in order to teleport to the Ferex Enclave. Now, as I stated earlier, this guide has higher base stats than is recommended in most guides. But if you're willing to use more supplies, you can forego the Dragon Gear and do this entirely with Rune. In any case, don't listen to anyone who suggests using a rune plate body instead of grinding out a fire torso. It's the best chest piece you can have until you're ready for a Bando's chest plate. And quite honestly, if you're not willing to get a fire torso, then go back to rune crafting. For the Iron Man, you can see the gear. I also have dragon plate legs. I got spooned them, so I use them. A single two dose prayer, which is used sparingly and not every fight, which is important. I have cheesy potatoes, which heal 14 HP. Mains can swap them out for monkfish instead. I use fire and death runes. Now, the Tome of Fire provides unlimited fire runes. However, the fire runes in my inventory are to prevent the spell from coming off autocast. If you equip the staff before the Tome, the game will register as not having fire runes and remove the spell from autocast. Keeping a few runes in the inventory will prevent this. Now, I bring enough runes to cast Snare and teleport to my POH where I use my Barrow's teleport. You will need a spade to access the bosses. 
Above my water runes, I have an Ectoplasm Matter, which you'll get from Soul's Ward. This thing gives 20% of a mob's HP in prayer XP, provided they're a Spectre. Basically, this means I get 20 XP per Barrow's kill, or 120 XP per fight, since there are six of them. This is, however, an untradeable item. Now on the right, my main account, I also have a strange old lockpick, which every main account should use. The reward from Sepulchre and will significantly speed up your kills per hour. They are well worth the cost. I think they're about 60k at the time of this video. I have a dragon spear, and while not necessary, they do come in handy for the combat achievement. So if you have one or a main account, it's also cheap. They're like 30k. For either account, if you don't have the strange old lockpick, you should use a single stamina dose to avoid walking for portions of this trip, but I'm lazy and I don't have that for my Iron Man, so I don't use it. As I said earlier, this guide has higher stat recommendations above average to avoid using additional supplies. That also means I'm not using combat potions. This is one of the few bosses in the game where I don't do that. However, if you're a main account or an Iron Man with plenty of access to them, I would strongly recommend using super attack, strength, and range potions. They will speed up your fights. Iron Men can use standard combat pots as well. They all speed up your kills. Now let's take a look at all of the upgrades you can make that cost less than 10 mil. If you get these upgrades, you'll have a pretty solid mid-level account. So starting off with our magic weapons, you're basically swapping out the Ibans with the Tome of Fire for a Trident of the Seas at 75 magic. It costs less than 50k, and then you're going to the Trident of the Swamp at 78 magic, but that's a bit pricier at roughly 3.6 mil. For lower levels, your magic offhand isn't really that important, so use whatever you like best. Now for melee, you'll keep the Dragon Simtar until you can afford the Abyssal Whip, plus your best defender, whatever it is at the time. For range, you're going to stick to the Magic Shortbow imbued until you can get a Toxic Blowpipe. For main accounts, you'll use Amethyst Darts or Amethyst Arrows, depending on your weapon, and Irons, use whatever you have available at the time. For your necklace, you'll want to replace the Amulet of Power for a Glory, and then finally a Fury, which is a hybrid necklace for all styles. Main accounts, however, can quickly upgrade to the Occult Necklace. At this point, you should be bringing a Fury and an Occult Necklace. For capes, stick to your best Avas. At 75 magic, you want to go for an Imbued God Cape. It's through the Wilderness Mage Training Arena. And get a Fire Cape once you manage to kill Jack. Your Dehyde will become Blessed Dehyde and eventually Carol's Armor. While Carol's Armor has more defense, Blessed Dehyde is used across more content and doesn't have an upkeep cost, so many players choose not to use Carol's at all. Now for under 10 mil, your Torso and Nesnot are actually going to be your best in slot. For legs, you're going to prioritize defense, so the Rune, then Dragon, then Torag's Plate Legs, but Obsidian takes best in slot for mid-tier as they give a plus one strength bonus. Now for your boots, you're going to upgrade to Dragon and you'll replace your ring with with a Berserker ring imbued for a plus eight strength bonus. Now onto an overview of the mechanics. There are six hills and six brothers. You'll need to kill all of them before looting the final chest at the end. Your kill order should be Darok, Carol, Arams, Guthans, Torags, then Varok. Darok uses melee and is weak to magic. He has a max hit of 64 that goes up the lower his HP is. Start here and pray melee. Carol only has a max hit of 20, but in my opinion is the deadliest brother. Use your Dragon Dagger specs, then swap to your Simtar while praying range. Aram uses Mage and is weakest to range, but melee is also viable. He has a max hit of 20 and like Carol, hits fairly accurate. Use your remaining prayer points and food as needed. Now Guthans uses melee and can heal himself, but isn't as much of a threat. He has a max hit of 24. Torag is the most useless brother, but he's got a max hit of 24. Varok has a max hit of 23, but can hit through prayer with a max of 15. This is where I use my snare spells. In each rotation, each brother is randomly selected to spawn in the crypt, which will be evident by this message. When you see it, simply continue your rotation, killing the remaining brothers, and circle back here when you're done. Now you're ready for the crypt. It's a large maze with lots of doors. Some are dark, some are light. You can pass through the light door, slowly working your way to the center. The final set of doors will present a puzzle, which is already solved for you. However, there are only four possible solutions, so it wouldn't be too hard to memorize them. As you do this, the final Barrow's brother has a chance to spawn after every door you open, but will always spawn at the chest if it didn't spawn sooner. Kill him and loot the chest. Now, this is where you would want to use your stamina pot if you don't have a strange old lockpick. Now, that thing uses one charge for every door that you force open. That means you're going to use two to four charges per trip. Simply use it on the dark door to go through it. After you're done, teleport to the Ferox Enclave or the POH to heal up. Throughout the fight, your prayer will slowly be drained while in the burrows and crypts, starting at eight prayer and going up plus one for each brother that you successfully kill. After killing all of the brothers, you have about a one out of 17 chance to receive a unique Barrows item. 
killing NPCs in the crypt, you can increase your reward potential, but this only affects standard loot, not the unique Barrow's items. At 100% reward potential, you have the possibility of getting runes, bolt racks, key halves, and dragon med helms. But it's better not to get full reward potential in order to avoid getting racks, key halves, and med helms, which will decrease your overall average loot. Instead, our target cap will be 86.8%. As you can see on the screen, there are a list of mobs that you can kill in order to achieve this. The most common and probably the standard that I've seen across the community is two skeletons and a bloodworm. However, that's not always available since they randomly spawn as you open doors and you simply may not see them. So here they are on screen for you to look at and use as a ref. All right, now we're ready to go for an actual kill. Just gonna put on the mage gear here. And first up is Darox. So normally you're just gonna start, run away, and boom. So normally what I would do if I'm not going for the combat achievement is pray melee and tank him as he can't hit through prayer. But since we're going for a no hit run, uh, this is the best way to do it, provided you're on an Iron Man and don't have a Dragon Spear, which I'll show in a little bit. But basically it's just running around the room just like this. He's gonna unfreeze in a second, so I'm gonna run away. And you can get off three full attacks before you have to start moving. So there's one, that's two, and there's the third hit. And I'm just gonna start running. See, he's already on the way. And then we're just gonna freeze, and it's basically gonna be this dance all the way around uh, with all of the Barrows brothers. And that's the first kill. Pretty easy. Next up, I believe we're doing carols. Yes, put on my melee gear and the dragon dagger in order to get ready for the spec weapon. Now, this isn't a melee one, so we don't need to tank it. Oh, okay, they're in the crypt. Don't have to worry about that. Going over to Guthans. I probably should have gone over to Aram's while I had a lot of prayer, but eh, Guthans is the next melee one, so I'm going here. The kill order doesn't honestly matter. The one I listed was just most preferential if you're worried about supplies or taking damage. But yeah, same thing. Uh, as you noticed, I kind of like to start on the edges rather than in the center of the coffin. It just, I don't know if it actually helps, but it seems like it does. There's the prayer drain. And just run around the room like this. Now you'll notice I have the true tile marker on. And that, it's basically because there's a small visual delay between when you attack and when you start running. And so the visual marker just kind of helps show that. So like, I'm gonna click here after this attack and see how the marker is moving, but my character didn't. That means my true tile, I'm actually like three, four tiles away before the character like speeds up to catch up. And then now we're on to range. So this is, like I said, my Iron Man account. I have Holy Sandals on just because I got them out of a clue and I was like, yeah, hey, why not? We'll use it. But yeah, Aram's is magic. And boom. Now on to Toreg, and we will use magic again. As you can see, you can actually run through him and still not get hit. So you have a little bit of leeway. The second attack. And the third attack. Usually I try and go around two corners before before I do it again. Now that's one of the things you actually have to be careful. See how I clicked over and it made me run around the corner to go back to attacking him. I have failed uh, quite a few times because of that. So just be mindful of placement and try and be cautious of that. All right, now we're on to Varax, and again, we will be using Mage, and he will be meleeing us. Like I said, start on the side, run over, freeze, and just like that. Now, obviously, if you have Ice Barrage or Entangle, this will go a little better, but since this is low level, this is the best we've got. Now, his room can be the trickiest just because there's a little more rubble in your way. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's the same concept, run around in a big square. And that's Varak. 
So now we're going to run over back to Carol. Find a light colored door. Remember the dark ones you can't pass through without the lock pick. So a bloodworm spawned. Um, so it's better to just kill it here since you don't know exactly what's going to spawn when you're up ahead. And there's Carol. So you have two options. You can run away and fight him at the chest or just fight him here. Now, as you noticed, I immediately potted prayer because he kind of does a lot of damage. So I'll take my prayer off and kind of show you what I mean by that. Okay, well, that's a zero. Well, normally he does a lot of damage, but he seems to be favoring zeros today. I mean, in that short amount of times, I've had to eat through five pieces of food before. So RNG. Get the next skeleton, and then we'll make our way over to the chest. But as you can see in the top left, our reward potential is at 71%, and we're looking to get somewhere between 86 and 88, roughly speaking. And this is why you would use the strange old lockpick or a stamina dose in order to avoid walking. There's the puzzle. Just go through it again and it opens and then you get your loot and that is the first combat achievement all right now in order to look at the can't touch me achievement using my main account here i have entangled the upgraded version of snare but you get that at 78 magic i also have a dragon spear so i had the problem that whenever i was going into the boss or any of the crypts they would despawn before i could actually entangle them or they would despawn after i entangled them and i can't find the clips where that happened and i can't seem to be able to reproduce that in any case the dragon spear corrected this so go into the boss use the dragon spear immediately it'll stun it and push it back then then you run away and then transition to using your free spells and going around. And that makes it, I feel like a little more consistent anyways across all of the melee brothers. All right, now it's time to take a look at Carol by killing him with only using a spec weapon. Fortunately for us, it's pretty easy. Just use anything that adds poison. You could technically do it with a toxic blowpipe as well, but obviously the dragon dagger is going to be the cheapest and most readily available for both main account and irons. So what you want to do is waste all of your spec energy on the boss and then run around the crypt in order to block it. From here, you can simply wait until it dies, basically. For the Faithless Crypt task, there's not much to say since the best way to handle the melee bros is by kiting the bosses around the room using a freeze spell, as I've already shown. Carol and Arams will be a little bit trickier, but you can teleport out after each kill to restock. In our case, that means you can take plenty of food to kill Carol or simply use the poison method to kill him off slowly. Then teleport to Ferox Enclave, restock your food before heading over to Arams. If Arams does a lot of damage, again, you can teleport out after the fight before heading over to Torag and Barak. This task really isn't as daunting as it may seem, even for low levels with all of these tactics available. Thanks so much for watching another episode of Things to Do When You're Not Runecrafting. Anyways, see you next time, guys.